Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. We are at my Usnia tree. Look at it in all its glory. It's uh, mostly Usnia, and somewhere down there, there's a little bit of tree. Um, this is a medicinal herb that we're looking at that's hanging everywhere that's uh, invasive to this poor little tree. <laughs> Normally, not such a problem, but boy, that has really overtaken this whole little stretch of trees here. It really likes old trees. This is probably a very old tree, but uh, it also suggests that we're in an area that's got really good air quality because these kind of plants tend to die off in places that are bad air quality. Also, you don't want to pick them in places with bad air quality. They will absorb a lot of the toxins. But this is the Usnea lichen, which is actually a, a combination of an algae and a fungus little fungus thread and then the, the algae grows again kind of a greenish little coating on top of that this one here is usnea long, longissima usnea longissima kind of a fun word to say 10 times fast but in any case that this one is long <laughs> it, it looks kind of like garlands on like a christmas tree it's got these long lovely threads and uh, one of the other ways to identify this, because there's quite a few look-alikes. I mean, there's this here, which is definitely not Usnea. But the, the thing is, you need to look for that little, that little fungus thread in the middle. And the, um, to, to do that, you basically lick it and try to pull it apart. Uh, and here you can kind of see a little thread there in the middle. I'll get a better example of this probably later. This one is very... There we go. That's actually almost a, a ribbon. This is such a big, fat one. But you'll look for... And you can do it in the smaller stems. It's probably easier. Lick it. And then look for the little filament. You take off the outer algae and you can see the little fungal filament right down there. And that confirms that you've got an Usnea species, not some other kind of lichen. Um, there's lichens everywhere and there's so many different kinds. Um, there's usually uh, three different Usneas that are used medicinally in North America or at least in the Pacific Northwest here. And this, like I said, this is the one I've got on this gorgeous tree back here. A good look at this thing. It's just covered in usnea. Now what we like about usnea is that it's basically nature's antibiotic. Um, and it's been confirmed in lab studies. They've studied it and found it has activity against staph and strep and the bacteria that causes pneumonia and even oddly enough tuberculosis. I mean that's a pretty fabulous one to have some activity against. Um, she has a lot of other activities too. There's even some antiviral activity. There's some studies that have looked at it against herpes and against Epstein-Barr virus and even against uh, polio virus. I mean, that's crazy. And, and the human papilloma virus, the virus that causes the cervical cancer. Um, these are some lab studies that have found that this weird little lichen has inhibits those things and that's great I mean who knows what how many other kind of viruses it's <laughs> well you're falling over um, it's effective for and I guess right now the virus we're all worried about is the coronavirus we're all in lockdown I'm out here at the family's um, off-grid cabin and I've decided to take some of this medicine off the trees this one's really great because it's known from traditional use to be used as a respiratory tonic for um, colds and flus, um, anything going through there. It's really good at expectorant uh, capacity to get the, the mucus out of your lungs. Um, also immune boosting. Um, and it takes care of other bacteria. Like I said, it'll cut down on the bacteria that can cause pneumonia. So it's been used for um, bronchitis and 
just general general lung conditions also urinary tract conditions skin conditions um, just a lot of different conditions this can be used for but right now I guess I'm going to be concerned with more of the uh, the cold prevention or uh, the cold symptom relief I should say and the immune boosting powers that this might might be beneficial for so let's gather some of this up and um, well, we'll look around at a few other ways that this can grow because this you can't expect to have a beautiful usnea tree in your backyard, but uh, there's a lot of it showing up here and there. It likes older trees, specifically um, places that are clean and not not full of a lot of air pollution. So we're that. I'm out here in Lyons, Oregon, in the middle of nowhere, not our own big acreage. Just gonna grab some of this and we'll see you in a moment. <laughs> I guess I gotta take that off. <laughs> That's a goodly amount. Well, you can see we're really filthy rich. The Usnea in this location. It's really just everywhere. Even growing on these low bushes. Even up in those trees. Here's what looks like a, a plum, maybe, or a... And it's there, too. Much shorter on this one. Younger. But I believe that's still our same Usnea longissima. Now here's how you're often likely to find it in the woods, just kind of a, a clump growing off of a tree. Maybe you'll be walking around a path, but it kind of holds up to its name, Old Man's Beard, if you look at this nice little clump here. Stick that on Santa Claus. Here's a pine tree, it appears to be down you can see even that, it's got a very small little usnea right there. Now there's other lichens that look like this. Remember to always <laughs> lick your lichen and check for, check for that little string of algae in the middle, or excuse me, <laughs> the fungal string in the middle and the algae on the outside. Here it is growing on the bark of a tree. Here we are at another one of my favorite places to look for Usnea, right next to the pond. There's just a bunch of these old man beards hanging down from these trees. Also a great place to look for Usnea is just on the ground. Some of the best times to look for Usnea on the ground are in the winter after storms. Um, this can be a really great way to harvest without damaging this living lichen. And also, some places, this stuff grows really tall on the trees. Here, it's obviously everywhere. It's just everywhere. But in some places, it could be up high, and you can't really reach it unless you find it just conveniently lying right there on the ground. And that's a totally legitimate way. Um, make sure everything looks clean. Give it a good wash. 
cut off any parts that look dirty. But yeah, that's Usnia longissima right there. Our personal swamp. <laughs> now remember, not everything that hangs off a tree is Usnia. This is green, it's hanging off a tree. But it's some kind of moss, definitely not Usnia. Here's another set of things that are not Usnia. Some other kind of lichen, kind of crusty. That green thing back there, not Usnia. Wrong old man. Okay, hey, here we are in my kitchen, and we're going to do something with this usnia. Um, first thing we want to do is, since these are very tough kind of little cells, we want to break them up a little bit so we can get better surface area. So let's chop these up. Also wash them first. Pretty easy to chop up herbs with a nice pair of sharp kitchen scissors. Okay, now that's all chopped up. Um, so with Usnia, it's kind of a special plant in that it does have that separate inner component and the outer component. And the outer component has the, the usnic acid, and that is much better extracted under high alcohol content. So the inner portion, though, is polysaccharides from that fungus um, in the middle there, that fungal component. And that is better extracted in a hot water bath. And so we're gonna do a two-part extraction with this one, which means we're going to take half of this and we're going to make a very strong tea out of it. And the other half, we're gonna go straight into a very high alcohol, get that started. And then we're gonna put them back together and have kind of a, a more well-rounded tincture in the end than if we had just shoved all of this straight into the alcohol. So let's start out by getting about half the jar full of water to put in our pot. Now that's hot water that's already pretty close to boiling from my hot water dispenser. But let's put that in the pot with about half the usnea and get that over to the stove. We're going to want to get that boiling and then reduce that to a very low temperature and cook that at a very low temperature, a very low simmer for probably about an hour. Get it a really good slow decoction, but you want to get that up to boiling first, then turn the temperature down, put a lid on it. Okay, now we're back here. We've got a jar. We've got very high proof alcohol, the highest you can get in your state. Here we can get Everclear, so I use Everclear. I'm going to take the last of that chopped up usnia, put that straight in your jar. Yeah, or <laughs> everywhere. But eventually, get it all in your jar and fill that jar about half full. with the Everclear. Seems about the right amount for the amount of usnia that's in there. Close enough. And uh, let that sit and wait while we get the 
Usnea boiling and uh, then simmering for about an hour on the stove. Um, yeah. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and shake this up. You can already see it's starting to extract almost immediately pretty nicely into this kind of uh, greenish extraction color. Give it some good tosses to get all that surface area exposed to that really high alcohol content in that Everclear. And uh, let's get back to waiting for the simmering pot. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.